Dear friends, welcome to Deep Sight. Let us take you on a journey through time and space and into the European barbarian civilization. We continue from the previous issue by introducing you to the formation process of European barbarian civilized countries. With the fall of the Western Roman Empire, another barbarian tribe began to appear on the stage of Europe. The Celts and Germans we introduced earlier were European barbarians who appeared in various historical documents and records during the Roman era. They appeared in BC and coexisted with the Roman Empire for hundreds of years, destroyed and replaced Western Rome. However, the earliest records of the emergence of this nation appeared in the 6th century AD after the fall of Western Rome. These are the Slavs active in Central and Eastern Europe today. The birthplace of the Slavs is located in today's southeastern Poland, in the upper reaches of the Vistula River. As early as the 1st century AD, they began to migrate outwards. Some believe that the ancestors of the Slavs may include the Scythians and Sarmatians, both groups being Aryans. The Scythians were an Indo-European nomadic people who lived on the northern shores of the Black Sea in ancient times. Their migration range extended to Western Europe and Central Asia. The Sarmatians are a branch of the Scythians. The Scythians migrated widely to Western Europe and Central Asia. The Sarmatians are a branch of the Scythians. The Slavs conquered other Scythian tribes in the Black Sea region. The fusion of these Scythians and Sarmatians formed the basis of the Slavs, while passing on the Aryan ancestry. According to the Wilkopolska Chronicle, 13th century, Slavs are descendants of Pan, a Pannonian prince. He had three sons, Lech, the youngest, Rus, and Czech, the oldest, who decided to settle north, east, and west, respectively. The descendants of Lech formed what is now Poland, the descendants of Czech became Czechs, and the descendants of Rus became Russians. Although these legends differ among the various Slavic peoples, they all support the idea that the Slavs have the same ancestors. Around the 6th century, Slavs appeared on the plains of Eastern Europe. At that time, they were somewhere between nomadic people and agricultural people, and sometimes they even made a living by raiding. The reason why the Slavs had little contact with Rome was mainly because they were too far apart. When the Huns began to attack Europe, the Slavs also chose the same European migration as other peoples. The tribes that moved westward were called West Slavs. They are distributed in today's Poland, the Czech Republic, Slovak, and other places. Those who migrated eastward were the East Slavs, who settled in today's Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, and other places. The Yugoslavs who migrated southward mainly settled in Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Romania, and other places. After the unification of Yugoslavia during World War II, these countries disintegrated into six small countries, namely Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Macedonia, Serbia, and Montenegro. After the 6th century AD, the South Slavs, who were in the clan tribal stage, began to continuously invade the Eastern Roman Empire adjacent to them, and established the earliest Slavic country, the Principality of Samo. The Principality of Samoa was the first recorded tribal political union in Slavic history. Founded by Samo, it ruled from Silesia to present-day Slovenia. Satsuma ruled from AD 623 until his death in AD 658. According to the only contemporary source, the Chronicle of Fredegar, Samo was actually a Frankish merchant who united several Slavic tribes and opposed the bandit raids and violence of the Avars who settled nearby. For his bravery and commanding skills in battle, Satsuma was elected King of the Slavs, Latin expression, Rex Sclaverum. By the 7th century, the South Slavs had begun to settle in the Balkans and establish the first kingdom of Bulgaria. The kingdom was originally a tribal alliance united by seven clan tribes, and later gradually developed into the prototype of a country. In the 9th century AD, the Slavs began to develop. The West Slavs established the Great Moravia State, and the East Slavs established the powerful principality of Kievan Rus. By the 10th century, the West Slavs successively established the rudimentary Czech Principality in what is now the Czech Republic in Slovakia and the rudimentary Kingdom of Poland in Poland. Like the Germans, after the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Slavs were gradually influenced by Christian culture and gradually converted to Christianity. The East Slavs live in the grasslands of Eastern Europe and have long maintained their traditional pagan beliefs. From their Kievan Rus Principality, the first Grand Prince to convert to Christianity was Vladimir I, it attempted to unify the polytheistic religions commonly practiced by the Slavs, but failed. Ultimately, he chose Christianity as the state religion of Russia, laying the foundation for the religious beliefs of the Slavs. 
The historical reasons why the Slavs chose different religions are mainly related to their geographical distribution and contact with other civilizations. From the 9th to the 11th century AD, due to different historical circumstances, the Southern Slavs and East Slavs successively accepted Byzantine Greek Orthodoxy. The Western Slavs, under the influence of the Germans, accepted Roman Catholicism. This religious differentiation reflects the wide distribution and diverse cultural exchanges of the Slavs in Europe. For example, the South Slavs' close ties to the Byzantine Empire led them to embrace Orthodox Christianity, while the West Slavs, due to their closer ties to the Roman Empire, were more inclined to Catholicism. Eastern Slavs, especially Russians, also adopted Orthodox Christianity due to religious and cultural exchanges with Byzantium. The religious choices of the Slavs were also influenced by political factors. This is closely related to the regime at that time. Rulers in different regions supported a certain religion out of political alliances, unified national identity, or other strategic considerations. Together, these factors shaped the religious diversity of the Slavs. After the Middle Ages, the main ethnic groups in various regions of Europe gradually evolved along this line and formed today's European structure. In the development of Europe in the Middle Ages, the invasion of other peoples had a huge impact on Europe. During this period of nearly a thousand years, Europe has never stopped invading other nations and experienced many serious catastrophes. Let's first talk about the rise of Islamic civilization. In the 7th century AD, Islamic civilization emerged on the Arabian Peninsula. For this part, please refer to our introduction to the Arab Empire in episode 20. The Arab Empire was also gradually formed within a few hundred years after the collapse of the Western Roman Empire. Within a century, a new empire spanning Europe and Asia was established. In 711 AD, a Muslim army led by Tariq ibn Ziyad of the Arab Empire crossed the Strait of Gibraltar and defeated King Roderick of the Visigoth Kingdom. This famous Battle of Guadalete marked the beginning of the Muslim conquest of the Iberian Peninsula. The Visigothic Kingdom had been torn apart by internal struggles for the throne before and was unable to effectively resist external invasions. The Arab victory was not just military but also due to their political strategy, which included cooperation with some local nobles who chose to support the new rulers for their own benefit. Over the next few years, Muslims quickly gained control of most of the peninsula except the northern coastal areas. Some Visigoth nobles and indigenous Asturians fled to the north and continued to resist Muslim rule. During this period, Christians on the Iberian Peninsula had been resisting. This was the famous Spanish Restoration Movement, also known as the Reconquista. Muslim rule lasted for nearly 800 years in the Iberian Peninsula until 1492, when Spain completed the Reconquista and the Muslims were expelled from Iberia. This period of history has a profound impact on the culture, religious art, etc. of Spain and Portugal today. To this day, many Spanish words come from Arabic. Let's turn our attention to the far north. Beginning in the 8th century AD, the Vikings' intrusion into Europe ushered in a 300-year-long historical stage known as the Viking Age. Vikings, also known as Vikings, mainly came from Norway, Sweden, and Denmark in Scandinavia. They are a group of northern Germanic peoples who are world-famous for their identities as explorers, berserkers, merchants, sailors, pirates, wizards, and craftsmen, as well as their excellent shipbuilding and navigation skills, as well as their ability to conduct expeditionary battles. Viking activities expanded from the Nordic region to the European continent, the North Atlantic, and even North America. The earliest recorded Viking raid was in AD 789, when the Vikings were mistaken for traitors and killed officials who wanted to tax them. In 793, they attacked the monastery on the British island of Lindisfarne, which marked the beginning of their intrusive activities. The Viking invasion of monasteries was the result of multiple factors including economic interests, religious opposition, and strategic considerations. First, monasteries were often rich in gold, silver, and other valuables, making them an attractive target for wealth-seeking Vikings. Second, monasteries were often located in remote locations and lacked adequate defenses, making them easy targets. In addition, as the monastery is a symbol of Christianity, its looting also reflects the religious conflict between the Vikings and the Christian world. The Vikings mostly believed in the gods in Norse mythology, and their plundering of Christian monasteries was also a declaration of paganism. Viking intrusions were not limited to robbery and plunder, they also established settlements in infested areas and sometimes even took control of entire areas. In England, for example, 
they not only raided but also settled the northern and eastern regions and formed a mixed society and culture with the natives. The activities of the Vikings were not limited to northern Europe and England. Their fleets sailed as far as the Caspian Sea and even went to Baghdad to do business with the Arabs. Their footprints spanned the European continent to the Arctic and even reached North America 500 years before Columbus discovered the New World. The Viking Age had a profound impact on the political landscape, culture, and social structure of Europe, especially in England and France. The end of this period marked an important turning point in the history of medieval Europe. Let's talk about the highlight moments of the Vikings. Rurik was a Varangian, the leader of a Viking tribe. He led everyone to make a living mainly by trading, plundering, and protecting caravans. He was famous for his superb navigation and combat skills, often carried out activities along the trade route from Variag to Greece. They obtained goods such as furs, honey, and wood and sold them to Constantinople and other places. In addition, Rurik's tribe was employed by merchants to protect them on their way to Constantinople. In 862 AD, Rurik was wandering around Ukraine and Russia, inadvertently killing the tribal chieftain who was then ruthlessly ruling the old Ladoga region. This area was a small tribe in western Russia, and Rurik was elected as its ruler, and the local farmers regarded him as their protector. After this, Rurik began to actively conquer new lands, the most important of which was the fertile village near Veliki Novgorod. After his successful conquest, he built the village into his capital city and became the first Grand Duke of Novgorod. This marked the beginning of the Rurik dynasty and was an important turning point in the formation and development of the Eastern Slavic state structure. He established the Rus Kingdom, with its capital initially located in Novgorod. Rus means rower. Later, Rurik's successor, Prince Oleg, captured Kiev in 882 and moved the capital from Novgorod to Nov Kiev, which marked the beginning of the period of the Kievan Rus Principality. Under Rurik and his successors, Kievan Rus became a powerful state, controlling a vast area from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea and conducting extensive trade with the Byzantine Empire and others. Kievan Rus has played an important role in history and is one of the birthplaces of East Slavic culture and Orthodox Christianity. Over time, the Vikings gradually embraced Christianity. This transformation mainly occurred in the late Viking Age, around the 11th century. The spread of Christianity changed their religious landscape, and many Vikings became Christians. This religious shift had a profound impact on Viking society, including religious practice, art, and culture. Today we can see traces of Christianity and Norse mythology in the history and culture of the Nordic countries. Let's take a look at the British Peninsula again. In 911 AD, the then French King Charles III signed the Treaty of St. Clair Sarept with the Viking pirate leader Rollo, granting the land around the mouth of the Seine to Rollo in exchange for his protection and preventing other Viking infestation. Rollo became the first Duke of Normandy. He and his heirs quickly integrated into French culture. In 1066 AD, Duke William of Normandy led an army to attack Anglo-Saxon England and achieved a decisive victory at the Battle of Hastings. Despite this, resistance continued throughout England, and it was not until 1071 that the conquest of the Anglo-Saxons was essentially complete. Norman nobles intermarried with Anglo-Saxon women, forming the Anglo-Norman culture. People spoke French and were familiar with the horse-riding combat skills of the European continent. William held the titles of Count of Rouen and Duke of Normandy, and became King of England after the Norman conquest of England. Normandy is derived from the word Norseman, which means Northerner. The rule of the Norman dynasty ended with the death of King Henry I in 1135. This dynasty had a profound impact on the political and military development of Western Europe, Southern Europe, and even the Middle East, and comprehensively reshaped the social landscape of England. In terms of culture, a large number of French words poured into Old English, and at least one-third of English words still originate from French. So what is the relationship between today's British royal family and the Normandy dynasty? In fact, there are blood relationships between the British kings from the Normandy dynasty to modern times. Members of the British royal family are connected by blood, forming a royal family that continues to this day. The founder of the Norman dynasty was Rollo, whose descendants included the kings of England. Over time, members of the royal family have passed the throne through marriage and succession to different bloodline families, including the Plantagenets, the Tudors, the Stuarts, the Hanoverians, and now the Windsors. Although these dynasties have different names, their members are all related to each other through blood ties. Therefore, 
The current British King Charles can trace his ancestors back to William the Conqueror of the Norman dynasty. In other words, the British royal family is a big family, and the kings and queens of different dynasties are part of this family. The biggest disaster in Europe occurred in the 13th century AD. The entire Slavic countries in Eastern Europe were destroyed by a stormy army. They were the Mongolian cavalry, which shocked the history of the world. They repeated the Huns who left the grassland a thousand years ago. They have made history, and they have become more powerful and violent. Wherever they go, they leave behind mostly desolation. In the Battle of the Kalka River in 1223 AD, the Mongol general Subutai defeated the Russian army and executed many Russian nobles, including the Kiev Prince Mstislav. In 1240 AD, Batu, the grandson of Genghis Khan, captured Kiev, marking the demise of Kievan Rus. Grand Duke Vladimir Yuroslav II became the Grand Duke of Rus with the support of the Mongols and was loyal to the Mongols. Mongolia founded the Golden Horde in Kievan Rus and ruled over the local Slavs and Vikings for 200 years. The Slavs were the main ancestors of the Russians, and the Mongol Empire's rule over Russia from the 13th to the 15th century also had a strong influence on the Russians. Ancestry had an impact. The genetic makeup of modern Russians shows that they are mainly descendants of Slavs, but also include ancestry from other ethnic groups, such as Uralic-speaking peoples, Turkic-speaking peoples, and Mongolians. This mixture of ancestry reflects the ethnic diversity of Russia's vast territory and various socio-political events in its history. Various factors have led to a complicated relationship between Europe and Russia historically and culturally. In addition to national similarities and differences, there are significant differences between Russia and other European countries due to historical expansionary policies, political systems, ideological differences, and religious beliefs, the split between Orthodox and Catholic churches. In addition, the other branch of the Mongols was even more brave. They went westward and successively destroyed Poland, Lithuania, Bulgaria, Hungary, and even approached Vienna, the capital of the Grand Duchy of Austria at the time. They even directly destroyed Baghdad, the capital of which had been at odds with Europe for hundreds of years. Islamic Arab Empire If the internal struggles in Mongolia had not stalled progress, Austria and the Holy Roman Empire as a whole would not have escaped the same fate. With the decline of Mongolia, the last foreign invasion that had a serious impact on European history was, like the Huns and Mongols, descendants of the Western Turks who originated from the Eurasian steppes, the Ottoman Turks. The rise of the Ottomans was closely related to the Mongolian Western Expedition. The Mongol Western Expeditions drove Turkic nomads to migrate westward, which had an impact on the development of the Ottoman Empire. In the 13th century, the Mongol Empire launched a Western Expedition and destroyed the Khwarezm Dynasty. At that time, the Ke tribe in Turkey belonged to the Khwarezm Dynasty, but after the kingdom was defeated, it fled to the west and took refuge in the Roma Sultanate in Asia Minor. Unexpectedly, the Mongolian cavalry killed all the way and actually destroyed the Roman Sultanate, forcing it to split into many small princely states. However, the Mongols retained the existence of the Roma Sultanate and even provided military support, allowing the Roma Sultanate to continue to rule here and pay tribute on behalf of Asia Minor. The Mongols established the Ilkhanate on Persian territory. In 1299 AD, Osman I took advantage of the chaos to formally declare Turkish independence. The rise of the Ottoman Empire was a century-long process. When the Ottomans first established their country, West Asia was not in a vacuum, and various powers had a foot in it. One of the important reasons for the rise of the Ottomans was the capture of Khaleesi by the Ottomans, which was crucial to the development of the Ottoman Empire because it then controlled the Dardanelles Strait and the southern coast of the Sea of Marmara, leading to Europe. The road has since been opened. The rise of the Ottomans was very different from the Mongolian rule. They were a settled civilization. They converted to Islam, destroyed the Eastern Roman Empire and the Orthodox Christian civilization there, and spread the teachings of Muhammad to Europe under the banner of Jihad, ideal, and was at war with Europe for hundreds of years, and its wars with the Byzantine Empire and Tsarist Russia lasted for more than 200 years each. The reasons for the war between Ottoman Turkey and Europe were complex and involved many aspects such as religion, political system, economy, and the age of discovery. For the history of the Mongol Empire and the Ottoman Empire, you can refer to our past videos. With the demise of the Eastern Roman Empire, Europe ended the Dark Ages of the Middle Ages. The end of darkness is dawn, and a new Europe is about to emerge. Dear friends, thank you for your company and watching. This is our content for this issue. 
We will continue to tell you the story of European civilization in the next episode. You are welcome to leave a message and subscribe, communicate and discuss together, learn and make progress together. Pursue the truth of history and foresee a bright future. See you next time.